everyone, and welcome back for another time of devotion. And I'm very glad to be here with you again today. And I'm very happy to be sitting in front of this very special piano. This was the piano that was in my grandparents' home all of my life, uh, which would be my dad's parents. And uh, when we started putting this building together with some family heirlooms, they asked if we would like to bring it here and put it in this building and actually freed up their living room and gave them some more space and thrilled us in the process. All of us grandkids, there's nine of us on the Blythe side, um, all of us uh, grew up with loving to, to play around on this piano and some of us girls, this is one of the pianos that we learned to play on, so it's super special. And this, uh, this bell right here, Dad's dad had cows and um, this was one of the cow bells that was actually used on uh, the cows to help find them and bring them home. And so uh, they called this the dinner bell. Grandma and Grandpa called this the dinner bell. And so it was considered a very high honor for us grandkids whenever uh, Sunday dinner was finished and Grandma would say, okay, and she'd call out a name of somebody that got to ring the bell. So I won't ring it for all it's worth right now because it's really loud. Um, but th this bell holds some super special memories for all of us grandkids. And here to my right, any of you that have been following our Saturday night worship services uh, have, have seen the instruments on the wall, and I won't take time to mention all of them, but uh, the little snaggletooth tambourine, um, my parents got that for me, I think for my second birthday. And as you can see, I call it snaggletooth because some of the little symbols had came flying off through the years on one side and then I completely wore out the middle. It, it gave way and so um, that's, that's special. And then if I can jump to the violin, to the fiddle, that was my mom's grandpa's and so that would be my great grandfather's fiddle and it is over 100 years old. So it is super special to us and I thought I would just point out some of those things today since we're doing a devotion here in, in this, this particular room. Um, the Lord has laid something on my heart that honestly for several weeks I thought I would go ahead and speak on this subject and somehow the timing didn't quite seem right as I tried to prepare a little bit more for it. And as I was praying about this devotion today, I felt like the Lord said now would be the time to, to delve into this subject. Um, all of us would agree that we are living in the end. Um, all my life I've heard preachers say we're living in the end of the end and if we're ever there it is now in 2020 with everything that we're going through in our country in our churches what we're facing we are in the end and with that being said we understand that we are living in the time where spiritual wickedness in high places principalities powers we are battling like never before and because of that we are facing battles in our mind like never before. I don't know how many have contacted us just since we've been here over these past several weeks. And they're saying, I'm fighting battles in my mind that is just almost unbearable. And my thoughts run to the scripture in James where he told us to submit ourselves therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from us. Now, I, I personally feel like that most everybody that would be listening to this devotion, if not everybody, you've got the submitting part down, but when it comes to resisting the devil and him fleeing from us, from you, that's sometimes where we go wrong. And it's not that we don't know how to submit. Uh, if somebody showed up at your door that, that was armed and they said that they were coming in to kill all of your family members, you would put into action the very definition of what it means to resist. You wouldn't have to have any training whatsoever. Everything within you would kick in and you would display what it means to resist. And, and the definitions of resist is to keep out, to uh, repel, to combat, and to withstand. So we would see that from you and from me if somebody we love was met with danger. But for some reason, when it comes to spiritual matters and the devil is coming against you and he's coming against me, somehow the definition or the reality of what it really means to resist, it gets a little foggy in our minds and it has mine many times and I'm sure you have 
felt the same way. You feel, you feel hopeless. You feel overcome with knowing how to properly resist the enemy. And sometimes the enemy will make us feel that because we're fighting a battle in our mind, somehow we're not praying as we should, or we haven't submitted properly as we should. But uh, in preparing for this devotion, my thoughts went to the Lord Himself. The scripture says that Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil for 40 days. The Spirit, capital S, led Him there to be tempted of the devil for 40 days. And after that, after He had spent all of that time seeking the Father, that's when the enemy showed up. So it wasn't at all that Jesus Himself had not spent enough time in prayer. It's not that He hadn't fasted. It's not that He had not dedicated Himself as far as His fleshly body that He had subjected Himself to. No, He was at the end of a 40-day fast, and that's when the devil showed up. And one interesting thing to me that we can learn from that process, that, that passage of Scripture that's so familiar, the only way, the only way that He resisted the enemy was with the Word. He, he quoted, it is written, and however the enemy had came against him, he used a scripture to combat and to resist the enemy. And um, our minds goes to Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, and all of you know where we're going. Uh, I guess I've read this more over the last several years than I have in all of my lifetime put together. Over the last two years, this has meant a lot to me. Paul said in verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand, or can I say resist, the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, and this is important to get this, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, and then this is what we should do. In verse 13, Paul said, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand, and that's, that's the definition of resist, in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And lastly, verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation, and this is what I wanted to get to, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now some may say, well, the most important piece of the armor would be the shield of faith, because it said, Paul said, above all, taking the shield of faith. We, we would realize one reason he would say above all is because in another scripture it says that without faith it is impossible to please God. So we understand that we must use faith in every area of our life, in every element of spiritual warfare. Faith is in action. But as we learned from Jesus himself when he was tempted, we must use the word. I've always known this, but it has never opened up to me as it has of late that when I'm in that place of spiritual warfare in my mind, what I should use is exemplified by Jesus himself. I must use the word. There are a lot of spirits running rampant in our in our world, in our nation, and you can fill in the blanks of some of the, the warfare that some of our young people are fighting like never before because of of spiritual wickedness in high places and principalities and powers of the air. Um, so many will say that they'll see an obscene billboard or something and as they lay down at night sometimes they'll have flashbacks of what they saw and the devil will make them feel like that they're guilty just because that thought ran back through their mind of something that they seen that day. They didn't want to see it, but it was just there and it causes such a battle in their mind. Um, sometimes someone has been wounded by somebody they love or they have confidence in and because they're dealing with that hurt, the devil will bombard them. You're bitter. You have a grudge in your heart toward that person. And while that may be the case for some people, a true child of God doesn't want a grudge in their heart and they don't want bitterness. And because they know it shouldn't be there, 
and the devil is taking advantage of that time of them wrestling with that hurt or that wound, it, it haunts their mind. The devil will, will pound them. I can promise you the same devil that's battling you is battling every blood-bought, sold-out child of God. Maybe not in the same way, but he's coming against us all. But Lord, help us to remember that Jesus himself said, Behold, in other words, pay attention. I give you power over all the power of the enemy. And sometimes we fail to realize that. We have in our possession, we have tucked away in our heart the scripture. We have everything that we need to battle and to resist the enemy. And I feel like if all of us could pray for discernment. This is where I've been many times. I've been confused as to what am I even fighting? What is this? And the Lord will allow me to, uh, to see through spiritual eyes and through the spiritual understanding of my heart what it is that I'm battling. And I speak very much from experience. Um, I don't talk a whole lot about this, but all through my life, I have fought many, many battles in my mind. And when I was 17 years old, it got so bad that I wasn't sleeping, I wasn't eating properly, and um, my, my parents honestly had reached the point that they had done all they knew to do for me and didn't know but what I would have to be hospitalized and, and actually um, gain some nourishment just through an IV because I could not function. I had got to a place where I was so oppressed and so tormented in my mind. And it was a place that I feel like God allowed me to walk that road to help me to understand that my family could battle for my victory, and they did. I, I honestly feel like that I won a victory, excuse me, I experienced a victory at 17 years old based on the prayers of my family. And I sincerely appreciate every prayer that they prayed and all the fasting that they did for me. But it was a little while later that the Lord led me back down that same road, I think I was around 25 at that point, and the Lord let me know, listen, you've got to learn to resist. You've submitted to me, you love me, but you've got to learn to resist the enemy. A, a friend of ours said that he was fighting so much um, spiritual warfare in his mind that he said the Lord spoke to him one day and said, you are spending so much time fighting these battles in your mind instead of doing and working in the areas that I have called you to work in. And he said it really shook him to realize, Lord, I've got to allow you to strengthen me so that I can rise and be who you've called me to be. Yes, you've got to submit to the Lord, but don't stop there. Remember, you must resist. And the way you resist, Jesus showed us by example, use the word. Use the sword of the Spirit to resist Him. And when you do, it is written, He must flee from you. He may try to come back just as He did with Jesus Himself, but come at Him again. It is written. And use specific scriptures to stand on and to war and to combat and resist the enemy. And I promise you, as we said, He must, He will flee from you. So God bless you. And I, I pray that this devotion has been a strength to you somehow to remember you're not alone. You're not defeated. You're not going down, but you're going to go all the way through in victory in the name of the Lord. And I pray you feel His strength today in a very special way as you go forward in His peace and in the assurance that you're going to make it. God bless you, and we'll look so forward to seeing you again next time.